In news this week, Walmart recently announced better than expected third quarter sales growth. This may seem like great economic news until you realize the reason behind the retailer's big jump in sales. As it turns out, wealthier shoppers are flocking to Walmart to make ends meet as rising prices squeeze pocketbooks. This also means that I must be wealthy. We also found out that of $450 million raised last year in funding for FTX Cryptocurrency Exchange, $300 million went to founder Sam Bankman-Fried, who sold some of his personal stake in the company. Now, this was likely criminal, but as of today, it only means just get in line with the rest. Going around the world, the eight billionth person was likely born this week, but it doesn't end there. The world's population will likely hit 9 billion in 2037 and 10 billion in 2058, as long as there is no other reset. And lastly, the Fed unleashed hell on those hoping for a pause, pivot, or slowdown with 16 different speeches from Fed speakers this week. All had the same message, higher rates for longer no pause or no pivot eminent. So two charts this week beginning here in the salt mines with the volatility index and the symbol is dollar sign VIX as you see in the upper left of the chart using stockcharts.com. Definitely nice dish. We've talked about this time and time again. Nice dish with this uh, lower trend line curving on up. So we're still within that trend line. We're hovering right now at about 23.12 and I would say we might even be able to come down to this 20 level but if we get below that 20 level things may break down in the VIX but if the VIX breaks down that means the stock markets are going to break up. Now we also have this trend line here somewhere around this 35 level that still also seems to be intact. So we're moving toward this pinch point and as you know once we get to that pinch point if the VIX moves on up that means the stock market moves down. But if the VIX moves down Again, that could be an upward trending stock market. In the upper portion here, we see the RSI. It's acting relatively normally. And moving on down here to the bottom portion of the chart, you see that the fast line has closed through the slow line. So we're waiting for this bottoming and basing here. Again, it's possible to come down to this 20 level. So we'll see where this bottoming and basing is and to see whether or not this particular formation remains intact. Okay, let's now go to our charts. And this chart here is a trusty two-year weekly chart in the spiders, the SPY. And as you can see, the close on Friday, 396.03. So even this chart here, it looks like it's evolving relatively well normally, but we're still within that channel, that downward channel. And let me try to draw it here with this line moving through here and then the top channel line moving through like that. Not a straight line, but you get the idea. So we are moving up to that 50 EMA. We're going to bump up against that perhaps maybe as the 50 EMA does coincide with my top trend line. Now we'll have to wait and see what happens there. My suspicion is that we'll get reflected back on down. And if we do get reflected back on down, do we move all the way back down here to the lower trend line? Or do we perhaps start setting up maybe a head and shoulders with that being one shoulder this is the head and maybe another shoulder somewhere around here or are we going to test this level here we don't really know at this point in time but I think the probability is that we're going to get reflected back we do have Christmas coming up and the ambassador is wondering about the Christmas time melt up that often happens well the melt up actually in my opinion started in early October and we're in it right now so are we going to top out 
at that point in time somewhere around Christmas. Well, time will tell, but keep your eyes on that. Moving on down into the oscillators, volume looks fine. Here we have the MAC. This looks nice. We had the bottoming basing here, an attempt and a failure there and we have another bottoming basing here and it looks like we still have some acceleration in the fast line versus a slow line a gap that is beginning to increase we're at a very weak negative 10 level plus or minus so that could always derail things but I think the fast line wants to try to head on up to that zero line so that perhaps would contradict the actual price chart so we'll have to watch that see how much strength this fast line has in moving on up toward that zero line the closer it gets the stronger it is here into the histogram you see pretty much the same thing there in the price rate of change we're waffling around this level under zero and that's not too encouraging but here in the RSI we can see that uh, definitely bottomed and based we have upward movement and we are above that 50 or midline so can we continue to sawtooth on up it's very possible looking here at the stochastics you see that possibility as such as the Mac the stochastics both the fast line and the slow line are meandering on their way up still a little weak under that midline but it looks like things are strengthening and that strength is shown here in the Williams. The Williams has popped up and above that midline and heading toward that overbought territory in that uh, say negative 20 to 0 range. So it's very possible that things can continue to strengthen but look out for say a top like in the Williams and let's see some other tops. Yes, right here, of course, in the stochastics. Watch out for those tops to see if we do get reflected on back down once we reach, say, the 50 EMA or this trend line here. So it's going to take a couple of weeks, perhaps. So keep your eyes out and continue to be patient and diligent. And for today, that's Chudog Charts. Thank you.